Hey guys, Zopra here. Today I will be giving you my opinion on Drew's abilities in Legion. Enjoy. Okay guys, so this is the um, Legion class preview for Druid and this has been um, what MMO Champion called Blue Posted. It means basically that it's come off of um, Blizzard's website. So we're going to skip all the uh, all the lore stuff here and we're going to go ahead and go down. One thing that I do want to point out here though this bit here is the affinity and what the affinity does is it provi uh, provides two benefits. So you've got the passive ability that's useful at all times um, including your main role. So if you take Feral and you go with the restoration affinity you constantly get the um, the heals from your Sarah's gift, whatever your Sarah's gift is going to uh, going to provide in Legion. And um, second is the access to multiple key abilities, so you get abilities from the other specs uh, to be able to use. So, for example, um, for example, as a Feral, you get Heal and Touch. I know we've already got that, but that's the kind of thing that um, that they mean there. So um, what the affinity is going to be is you'll have the balance affinity. So every other spec but balance is able to get this. And it's astral influence which increases the range of all spells, abilities and auto attacks by 5 yards. Now I don't think that's a major, major difference really. Because um, I mean increasing increasing like spells by 5 yards means cyclones and well yeah cyclones going to have... Um, a like larger range than that so it could be beneficial but um, looking here compared to some of the others I probably wouldn't take the balance affinity. Uh, feral affinity being the feline swiftness which increases your movement speed by 15% probably won't be taking that one either because um, you don't really need the movement speed as much as you'll need perhaps some of the other things that I've been that I've seen here but um I mean it is an option to take and it would be good if you need to kite for example uh, a warrior and a DK the movement speed could be quite beneficial um, the guardian affinity will be the thick hides which reduces all damage taken by 10% I think that's probably one of the uh, one of the better ones as I believe with thick hide by reduces all damage taken by 10% I believe they mean from all sources, so like physical, shadow damage, all that kind of thing. And then there's the restoration affinity. So your Sarah's gift constantly heals the druid or allies when the druid's at full health. So if it works the same as your Sarah's gift in this expansion, then um, that's probably one of the better ones to take also. Um, so unlike Heart of the Wild, affinities are not temporary buffs. This enhances access to an off spec delivered through a cleaner game mechanic empowers druids of any specialization to make interesting situational combat decisions so basically you're going to have a bit of an off spec um, or another spec of your choice within your main uh, your main spec so you, if you go if you're feral with um, the restoration affinity then you'll be feral but you'll have a bit more heals to be able to um, to be able to use so that's that and then we'll go down to balance. We'll skip some more of the uh, the lore here. This bit here is about how. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, this bit here is about the um, the rotations that they've had, the cycles, um, because in Cataclysm and Mr. Pandaria, the uh, cycles used to be use the abilities to get it up to the eclipses. And then in Warlords of Draenor they changed it so that the um, so that the cycle just went for it by itself, so it just kept moving backward and forward. It was never sort of uh, still at one point. And um, they intend to change that again. And the Eclipse Bar is being taken out, and they're putting in an Astral Power resource. And it's built and spent um, by using abilities. So it's going to use well, Boomkin's going to be once again um, focusing on maintaining the dots, and they generate astral power um, 
and then you've got a mixture of Lunar Strike and Solar Wrath. Lunar Strike, I believe, takes place of Starfall, and I think Solar Wrath takes place of Wrath. And then spend an Astral Power on either Star Surge or Starfall. So I, from this, I have a feeling that the Star Surge and the Starfall isn't going to be a free, um, a free stacked, um, a free stack cooldown, like it is in this expansion. So you can use it three times before you can't use it again before one comes off the cooldown. If that makes sense. Um, so a basic look at the core abilities for the Balance Troop is move fire, 45 yards range, instant and that's the description of it there, the tool tip quick beam of lunar light burns an enemy for minor arcane damage and then an additional strong arcane damage over 18 seconds so pretty much the same as before but um, I'm I mean not really I wouldn't really say it's uh, as you know, as a boomkin, I'd say that's beneficial. Since you need to maintain your dots, if you've got to go bear form um, to make sure you don't die, you can still apply uh, your move fire, which I think is really crucial to be able to maintain the dots. So I think that's quite a nice addition there. Sunfire, also 45 yard range and instant. And then it's a quick beam of solar light, burns the enemy for minor nature damage, and then an additional strong nature damage over 14 seconds to the primary target and all enemies within 5 yards. Doesn't say anything about the bear form, so I'd assume you can't use sunfire in bear form, but um, it's a 45 yard range, same as the moonfire, both dots as well, so it's pretty uh, pretty simple. Lunar Strike. I believe Lunar Strike's taken place of... Uh, Starfire and that's going to be a 45 yard range as well so these are quite big ranges uh, whether or not they're going to increase the healing range to like 50 yards instead of 40 yards I'm not sure otherwise you're just going to be able to hit healers on the four, uh, on the 40 yards range which usually used to be um, used to be like quite a safe range so whether or not they're going to change that uh, I'd like to see but at the moment we're still assuming it's the 40 yards so the 40 yard range is not going to be safe from the druid's, uh, druid's damage here. But it cools down a striker lunar energy causing strong arcane damage to the target and minor arcane damage to all other enemies within 5 yards. So it's kind of like a dot in itself I guess where it um, also does damage to enemies within 5 yards but that's no big deal. Uh, at a 2.5 second cast time. Hmm. I guess that's an okay cast time. Um, I think Starfire was about that anyway, so not really too much has changed there. And it generates 15 Astral Power. I believe it will generate the Astral Power. As you know, never mind, I was thinking there's still Eclipses, but they're gonna just generate Astral Power. Uh, okay, Solar Wrath, 45 yard range as well, 1.5 second cast time. Sounds about right for the Wrath. So I don't think either of the cast time for these have been changed at all. The range seems to have been increased so by quite a bit. So you hurl a ball of solar energy at the target, deal a moderate nature damage, and it generates 9 astral power. So you get more astral power from the lunar strike. But um, obviously it's a shorter cast time so you can't expect to get the same amount of astral power from solar wrath as you can from the lunar strike. So which one's going to do... Um, which one's going to do the most damage or whatever then um, that's that's yet to be seen at the moment uh, in the current game Starfire is better so whether or not Lunar Strike is still going to be the top uh, we don't know yet but uh, moving on to the Star Surge now with that being listed there I assume it uses 40 Astral Power so you'd have to use quite a bit of these spells here um, to generate enough astral power for it. Once again a 45 yard range and it's instant. Uh, so you launch a surge of stellar energies at the target dealing massive astral damage. Also grants you lunar and solar empowerments which increase the damage of your next lunar strike or solar wrath by 30% respectively. You can accumulate up to three of each empowerment. So the empowerment that you get an, at an eclipse currently is going to be uh, obtained from using Star Surge 
which means you just do 30% more damage from either Lunar or Solar Empowerments depending on which one you use and you can stack that up to three times so that's quite nice uh, I'm not too sure how that's going to work uh, in Arena as such because once you've got two of the Astral Power to get the Star Surge it's... I don't know it's, it's hard to really tell because um, obviously being able to get an empowerment for 30% more damage is really nice but we haven't looked at the Starfall yet and perhaps Starfall could be better than Star Surge or not uh, I mean obviously until it's been tested we can't really be too too sure but Starfall uses 60 astral power, 45 yard range once again and it's instant cools down a wave of falling stars that damage enemies at the targeted location deals strong astral damage over 8 seconds Enemies in your star fall take 30% additional damage from your move fire and sun fire. So, I guess that means while you have star fall active um, and the target's been hit by it, then your move fire and sun fire does 30, yeah, 30% 30 more damage. So, that's quite good as well. I mean, I feel like star surge should be used, but I feel like star fall needs to be used as well. Because if you're maintaining dots and trying to keep AoE damage up, Starfall would be a nice addition. Um, so, I'd at the moment I'd say that Starfall needs to be prioritized over Star Surge. And if you've got the extra astral power, then you go ahead and use the Star Surge. But until it's been tested, I can't be uh, I can't be too too sure. But I feel like Starfall might be a bit stronger than Star Surge. Um, unless you're going in for a burst, then Star, Star Surge might be better to use, but if you're playing a comp like LSD2, which has the Affliction Warlock, and it's all about maintaining dots, then you'll probably want to keep using these Star Surges until uh, you're really deep into dampening, and then the Star, sorry, the Starfall, until you're really deep into dampening, and then the Star Surge just, just to try and finish off some kills, but um, yeah, until we've tested it, we're not really, can't really be too, too sure. And then the mastery is Starlight, which increases the damage of Starfall and Star Surge and the effects of your empowerments that they will grant by an additional 30% with mastery from typical gear. So the mastery will be quite nice. I'm not too sure whether uh, we're going to have to ha stack haste or mastery this uh, in Legion, but um, having the increased damage of Starfall and Star Surge and the effects of the empowerments by 30%. Would be quite good because then if you get the empowerments you've got 60% more damage and get an increase well 30% more damage from your star fall and your star surge also is going to be um, I feel really important in the game once again my example if you're playing LSD2 getting more damage from your star fall you're just going to spread more and more and more pressure especially with the uh, warlock stots it's just going to it's going to start to become overwhelming so additionally, to give you an idea of how some of the talents may build upon this, here's an example of one of the balance specific talents. So they're making uh, specific talents for each spec, and they've given us an example of a balance specific one here, which is Blessing of the Ancients. So it looks like it's an ability to use and not a passive, uh, and it's instant, well, instant meaning that we know it's uh, going to be an ability. Um, so you gain Blessing of the Ancients, activating or swapping between one of the two following beneficial effects. Blessings of the Loon increases astral power generated by Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike by 50%. And Blessing of Anchi grants free astral power every two seconds. So the talent's basically going to um, help you increase your astral power gain. And... Um, whether or not it's going to be RNG as to which one of these you get or whether you get to choose which one you get, I'm yet to see. But if it's one you get to choose, then um, potentially it could be situational as to which one could be better. I mean, until all this is... I mean, I keep saying this, but um, like I can't really stress it enough. Until it's been tested, I can't really be too, too sure how stuff is going to go down. I've just I can only give you the idea that's popping into my head as I read through this. So um, that's Balanced Druids done. Just a few more to go. So Pharaoh, we're going to skip once again the uh, lore, as we just want to focus on this bit here. Uh, so going through this bit here, just going to scan through it real quick. Um, 
they're taking the approach they're going to make Savage Raw a talent choice uh, matching against two compelling alternatives so um, Savage Raw is not going to be an ability you have unless you talent into it which means you too, could miss out on two other uh, talents for Savage Raw so Savage Raw might not even be a, um, an ability that people have anymore so here's the com uh, the core abilities for the Feral Druids so Shred uh, is obviously going to cost the 40 energy it's going to be 40 energy sorry it's going to be melee range instant and you shred the target causing moderate physical damage to the target awards a combo point and damage increased by 20% against bleeding targets so obviously I think uh, bleed I think mastery is going to be quite a big uh, key in legion from what I've just read here as um, obviously bleed damage is going to be uh, crucial if that's still the same mastery and then being, being able to do 20% on top of that with a shred is going to be um, a pretty big deal. While Stealth Shred deals 20% increased damage and has double the chance to critically strike. So if Incarnation remains in the game then um, Shred's going to be really good in Incarnation still so could be nuts. Obviously I'm going to probably well with the information that I've got at the moment uh, it's still going to be the rake stun to open uh, from Stealth with moving on to rake actually here so it's going to be 35 energy melee range and instant uh, rake the target for minor bleed damage and an additional strong bleed over 15 seconds so you get the minor bleed damage uh, initially when you hit them and then you start to bleed them for 15 seconds and uh, it reduces their movement speed by 50 percent for 12 seconds and gives you a combo point so while stealth rake will also stun the target for four seconds so it's quite nice that it's going to reduce their movement speed because if you've got bleeds on your targets and they start to take a lot of damage you are going to be able to kite a lot more efficiently than um, if you didn't have that so that's quite a nice addition uh, whether it's going to be whether like the um, there's going to be any way to remove the uh, movement impediment then um, you know that's another story but I don't think that's going to be possible Okay, so onto Rip. It's going to cost 30 energy and it's going to use 1 to 5 combo points, so it's still going to be combo point uh, based. Melee range and instant. It's a finishing move that causes massive bleed damage over 24 seconds. Damage increases per combo point. Pretty much the same as uh, the current expansion. Uh, onto the Ferocious Bite. 25 energy, 1 to 5 combo points again. Melee range and instant. Finish a move that causes damage per combo point and consumes up to 25% additional energy to increase damage by up to 100%. So, that's interesting because it's going to cause damage per combo point, but it can use up to 25% more energy to increase damage by up to 100%. So potentially most people might want to buy on 50 energy instead of 25 to try and get 100% more damage. So um, how that's going to work out, I'm not too sure, but that's quite a um, quite an incre interesting addition. So we'd have to see how that uh, plays out. Uh, when used on targets below 25% health, Ferocious Bite will also refresh the duration of your rip on the target. So that's obviously quite beneficial too. If the target's below 25%, uh, if the ferocious bite doesn't kill them, rip's just going to be renewed. Which um, obviously rip being one of our main bleeds, that's quite a big deal. But it's been the same. Uh, I can't remember how, since how many expansions, but um, it's been there for quite a while. And then critical strike chance doubled against bleeding targets. So once again, bleeds are going to be quite key uh, with ferocious bite uh, critically striking because the chances will be doubled. Omen of Clarity is still a passive and your auto attacks have a chance to reduce the energy cost of your next cat form ability by 100%. Pretty much the same uh, as it's been um, since MOP when they took it out that you couldn't use it for any ability, it's now just cat form abilities. Um, So yeah, that's pretty much the same. Primal Fury, uh, passive still. Uh, you gain an additional combo point when you critically strike with a combo generating attack. 
damage over time cannot trigger this effect. So if you crit with shred for example you get two combo points instead of one. Pretty much the same, nothing's really changed with that. Um, relatively self-explanatory as well. And then Mastery Razor Claws increases the damage done by your cat form bleed abilities by 60% with Mastery from typical gear. So once again the Mastery is going to be uh, increasing the cat form bleeds. So Mastery may be the um, maybe the stat to stack for Feral Druids. Uh, so here's the um, here's the example of the Feral specific talents as well. Uh, and it's Jagged Wounds is going to be passive. Your Rip, Rake and Fresh abilities deal the same damage as normal but in 33% less time. So basically uh, it, instead of lasting 55 seconds for the Rake it would last 33% less of that which would be probably uh, I actually can't work it out. I'll work it out here real quick. Uh, so it's going to be 4 seconds less, so it'll be about 10-11 uh, seconds uh, to do all the bleed damage instead of the 14-15 seconds. Uh, what was it? Uh, 15 seconds. So that might be quite a nice talent to take. You'd have to keep reapplying the bleeds um, a bit more often. But if you've got Incarnation active and you're going to keep wanting to use the Rake Stuns, then it could be quite a good talent to go for. But until it's tested in action, we can't really be too sure. Now Guardian not really being viable in PvP, I'm still going to go ahead and cover it. I'll try and go over it maybe a bit quicker than the other ones as I don't want to take too too long um, trying to trying to go through all these so especially since Guardian I don't think is going to be viable in PvP but we'll go ahead and quickly cover it so um, there's the lore if you decide you want to read that you better pause the video read it all that good stuff uh, there's the gameplay for the Guardian as well being uh, well the defenses being the health, the armor, uh, mitigation and regeneration so the core abilities, they're still going to have Mangle, which is melee range, it's instant, and it has the 6 second cooldown. And it hits them for strong physical damage, reducing their movement speed by 50% for 12 seconds, and it deals 20% additional damage against bleeding targets. So get bleeds on them, and your Mangle does 20% more damage. So that's pretty good. Gives you 5 rage. That's... Mm, I mean, it's not great, but at least it gives you the rage so any rage is better than no rage I guess uh, lacerate melee range instant 3 second cooldown uh, lacerates the enemy target dealing moderate bleed damage and an additional moderate bleed damage over 15 seconds stacks up to 3 times lacerate has a 25% chance to reset the cooldown on mangle so lacerate is going to be quite a nice ability to use off cooldown uh, every 3 seconds I think so you're going to use lacerate off cooldown and mangle off cooldown I'd assume uh, fresh is on a 6 second cooldown, you'll probably use that off cooldown as well. Uh, it's instant and it strikes all enemies within 8 yards, dealing minor bleed damage and applying lacerate for an additional moderate bleed damage over 15 seconds. So if you fresh, it's going to do minor bleed damage and it, will, and it will apply a lacerate for you, which I assume will work with stacking 3 times as this one as well. So you'd be able to lacerate. Uh, lacerate and fresh for your full uh, free stacks so what I'd probably do if I played Guardian uh, just quickly is I'd mangle lacerate lacerate and then fresh hopefully get one of will get the third lacerate there uh, you've got Moonfire and Guardian interesting which is a 40 yard range instant and um, same as before quick beam of light burns the enemy for some arcane damage and you can use that in bear form as well so it looks like Moonfire is going to be uh, something that's made, sorry, something that's uh, usable in bear form. Although I didn't see it above for the uh, Feral Druid, so whether or not we're going to have uh, Moonfire as a Feral Druid, I'm not too sure. Um, okay, so defensive, you've got the Iron Fur, uh, which is still an ability, it's not like a passive. It's going to cost you 40 Rage, it's instant again, and increases your armor by 100% for 60 seconds. Multiple uses of this ability may overlap. So if you use it uh, two times, it's going to stack or overlap. It's not going to 
prevent you from being able to use it until it expires. So you can overlap that. Mark of Ursul, uh, 40 rage instant, reduces magical damage taken by 30% for 6 seconds. Mm, that's kind of another uh, another wall. So if you're fighting a boss that uh, does a lot of magical damage, you'd be able to reduce that by 30% for 6 seconds if you want to. Frenzied Regeneration costs 10 rage, it's instant, uh, 20 second recharge, it has 2 charges, and it heals you for 100% of all damage taken in the last 6 seconds over 6 seconds. Minimum 5% of maximum health. So it looks like Frenzied Regeneration has been changed, and um, I don't know, it's interesting, I'm not too sure how it's going to work. But I guess in PvE, bosses hit quite hard, so it's going to be quite a good heal. Uh, probably hence the 20 second cooldown. Or 20 second recharge, sorry. But it does have two charges, so we'll have to see. And then the Mastery Nature's Guardian increases your maximum health and healing received by 40% with Mastery from Typical Gear. Also increases your attack power by 20% with Mastery from Typical Gear. So that sounds like quite a good Mastery. I believe Guardian's probably going to be stacking Mastery... Um, as well, but they've got a stack like dodge and stuff as well, so I'm not too sure how that's going to intertwine because I don't really PVE, but um, it's quite a good, looks like quite a good mastery. And then a guardian specific talent is rend and tear, it's a passive, and your lacerate bleed now also reduces the target's damage done to you and increases damage you do to the target by three percent per stack. So that could be quite a nice talent, but um, once again it's going to be up against two other talents. I mean, that's the same with all of these uh, class-specific talents. They're going to be up against um, other talents specific for that uh, for that spec. So it's not necessarily something that you're going to want to take because there might be something better for it. Okay, we're on to the last one now, guys. We're almost at the end of this. Thank you for sticking by this video. I do hope it's helpful, uh, me giving you my insight into this. But um, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the Restoration Druid one. Uh, for you guys. So once again I'm going to skip the lore. Uh, gameplay obviously we focus on uh, hots or hills over time and they're saying here that uh, the mastery has the most room for improvement um, so they're redesigning it to emphasize layering healing over time effects because that's the main hill for Druid, a healing over time effect. Uh, so favoring uh, more engaging gameplay and catering to the restoration theme so obviously we'll have to see how that plays out with the changes that they want to make. So some of the core abilities. The mastery is going to be harmony uh, still. And your healing is increased by 12% with mastery from typical gear for each of your restoration heal over time effects. So once again heal over time effects. Uh, your healing is going to be increased by about 12%. But obviously with more gear it's probably going to be increased uh, above that as per the usual. Then there's Heal and Touch, 2% mana, 40 yard range, so it looks like it's going to remain at the 40 yard range for heals, so it seems, uh, which means that a Boomkin is going to be able to damage you even at a 40 yard range. So you used to be able to have 40 yard range as like a safety range, so you could sort of um, back off if they came close as they want to CC or whatever. This isn't the case anymore, you can take damage from 45 yards which means 40 yards is, 40 yard range is no longer going to be like a safe range so I'd like to see how that plays out and I'd also like to see if other casters are a 45 yard range uh, as sort of the same as Boomkin but yeah 2% mana 40 yard range and it's a 2.5 second cast and here was a friendly target for a moderate amount pretty much the same nothing's really been changed regrowth 3.7% uh, mana 40 yard range and a 1.5 second cast. Here was a friendly target for a, moder a moderate amount and another minor amount over 12 seconds. Regrowth has 60% increased chance for a critical effect. So that's quite nice that it'll do, um, that it has 60% chance to crit because we like crits, right? But I don't think crit's going to be something that's majorly stacked as a restoration druid next, uh, next expansion. So, on to Rejuvenation, 1.9% mana, 40 yard range, instant, and it heals the target for a moderate amount over 15 seconds. Relatively the same. One thing that I'd like to mention though is, um, the mana used to be done by sort of old 10k mana for this heal and that kind of thing. 
I kind of like how they're doing it in percent, so I really would like to see how working with percents for the abilities plays out, whether or not it's going to mean that it costs more. Um, so, for example, if, say for it gets changed from being uh, 1,200 mana for rejuvenation, say if you've got 300k mana, it's going to be about 3k for a cost, which means it's going to be more costly, but I would like to see how the percentage with mana is actually going to work out. But um, on to Life Bloom now, I think we're at. 2% mana, 40 yard range, instant again. Heals the target for a moderate amount of damage over 10 seconds. When Life Bloom expires or is dispelled, the target is instantly healed for a moderate amount. Life Bloom can, uh, can be active only on one target at a time. I assume it's still only going to be one stack of Life Bloom, and it's not going to stack three times uh, as it has in the past because they haven't mentioned it here. So one stack we're going to assume. And then there's the efflorescence, 4.3% mana. So they're making efflorescence a move now. It used to be a passive for swift men back in Cataclysm. Then it got removed, that kind of thing. But it's back again. So 4.3% mana, 40 yard range, and it's instant. Uh, grow a healing blossom at the target location, restoring a moderate amount of health to three injured allies within 10 yards every two seconds for 30 seconds. Only one efflorescence can be placed um, at a time. So it's going to be similar to the swift men that used to be on the floor. But um, yeah, healing. It doesn't say how much is actually going to heal just as a moderate amount. So we'll have to see how, uh, how good that is actually going to be. Onto Swiftman, 1.6% mana, so probably the cheapest, yeah, the cheapest uh, heal out of all of them. Uh, 40 yard range, instant. It has a 30 second cooldown now, which is going to be up from 15 seconds, so that's quite a big deal. And it instantly heals a friendly target for a large amount, so it's still going to be quite a big heal. How big? We're not too sure yet. Uh, wild Growth, 7.5% mana, 40 yard range. 1.5 second cast time and a 10 second cooldown now. Uh, up from I think 6 seconds. So he was up to 6 injured allies within 30 yards of the target for a moderate amount uh, over 7 seconds. Uh, healing amount starts high and declines over the duration. So that's interesting. Whether or not Wild Growth is going to be that good, we're not too sure. But um, so. It's a 40 yard range, but if you use it on um, one of your arena team members, it also heals um, people within 30 yards of the guy that you've used it on. So if you use it on yourself, everyone 30 yards around you will also get it. So that's, uh, that's quite nice. And it's over 7 seconds. It's up from, um, it's up from I think, 3 targets. So if you're playing uh, in fives, 5v5, five five, then uh, that's quite a good addition. I'd like to see how the um, how the decline works, so whether it's going to decline by a lot or not. Living Seed, passive. Uh, when you critically heal a target with a direct healing portion of swift memory growth or healing touch, you plant a Living Seed on the target. When the target is next to attack, the Living Seed will bloom and heal for 50% of the initial amount healed. So Living Seed would be really good in conjunction with Regrowth because that has 60% chance to crit. So say for you crit um, 80k uh, with your Regrowth. Uh, when the target gets attacked with the Living Seed, because the Living Seed will be planted because of your crit with uh, with the Regrowth, um, it will heal you for 50% of the amount. So it heal you for... Oh, sorry. I'll just mute my phone. I uh, don't want that to ruin the video or anything as we've been doing this video for actually half an hour now. We've actually been going over this for half an hour, that's quite, uh, that's quite a long time. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this video. Um, I actually would like to know what you think of this kind of video in the uh, comment section. But anyway, enough of the, uh, enough of the sidetrack, so you would get healed for 40% if you crit 80k with the, um, with the regrowth for example. So it's uh, gonna be, this looks like it could be a really really good um, uh, passive ability, I guess, as it's going to heal you for fifty percent of the amount, which is which is sorry, which is actually quite a big deal because Swift Mend heals quite a lot. If that crits, then it's going to give you a nice heal. 
Same with Regrowth. Uh, healing Touch not used as much, but also can get a nice crit, so that's going to be a really good one, uh, or at least I think. Omen of Clarity, a passive. Uh, your periodic healing from Life Bloom has a 4% chance to cause you to enter a clear casting state, causing your next regrowth to be free. So it's only going to work for regrowth, and it's only going to be got. As you, sorry, you can only receive it from the Life Bloom. So you use Life Bloom, you've got a 4% chance to um, hit Omen of Clarity, which means your next regrowth won't cut, won't cost 3.7% uh, mana. Although I think 3.7% mana is going to be quite um, quite a dear cost cast, so we'll have to see if that gets changed or anything. But it seems like it's going to be um, quite quite a expensive heal. So um, the restoration specific talent will be flourish, or that's going to be one of them. Uh, it's going to be an instant cast. It's going to have a one minute cooldown, and it's going to extend the duration of all your heal over time effects on friendly targets within 60 yards by 10 seconds. So, the fact that druids, uh, restoration druids, need to maintain um, need to maintain their hots. If it's starting to fall off of all the targets, then I feel like flourish should be a really good um, a really good ability. Because you're obviously going to be within range to be able to heal your team the majority of the time. So um, to extend the duration of the heal over time effects on like, I, I, I believe it will be on all your friendly targets within 60 yards. I think that's quite a big deal. Um, and I think that's going to be very beneficial. But uh, it depends what kind of talents it's going to be up against in the, uh, in the talent tree. So um, that looks like we're at the end. As they've got that bit there. So um, that's pretty much going to be uh, the end of this video. So if you've stuck, uh, if you stuck watching the video all the way through, then thank you very much. Uh, if you liked it, please be sure to give me a like. Um, also, if you've got any feedback to give me or anything, then please leave it in the comments section. If there's anything you'd want me to improve on next time, uh, please let me know in the comments section. All feedback's greatly appreciated, and I do try and take um, action with all the feedback to try and make better videos for you guys, uh, so that you can enjoy them more and more and more. Because that's what it's about. I want it to. I want these kind of videos uh, going over like the Legion stuff to be able to uh, give you sort of my insight into it, and hopefully it's educational um, as well as I want to be able to provide you entertaining content. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And um, the next video will be, I think I'll probably cover the PvP talents or the talents for druids. So um, we'll have, well, we'll have, we'll have to see. I'm not too sure which one it's going to be or anything yet. Uh, I'm still yet to work that out, but it's going to be along the lines of Legion. The next video will be Legion related anyway. So without me going on to too much of a ramble, um, thank you, thank you so much for watching. And um, until next time, take care and bye for now.